You're missing something that is absolutely vital for your music, but you might not even realize that you're doing it. What is it? Well, you're not paying enough attention to the art of listening. Now, you might be thinking, but I do listen. Well, I'm gonna challenge that thought. I'll get to that shortly, but first, is listening even really that important? Well, it's not just me who thinks so. Let's bring in some big guns to back me up. So Duke Ellington said, the most important thing I look for in a musician is whether he knows how to listen. And I was watching Rick Beato's excellent interview with Pat Metheny recently, and Pat goes on and talks at length about how he thinks that the ability to listen well is possibly the most important thing he looks for in musicians too. And one of the key things to understand here is that there is a real difference between hearing and listening. So it's very easy to think that you're listening carefully when you're not. I made a video not that long ago about Sherlock Holmes and, and how you could apply his approaches to music. And one of the things he said there is really relevant here, where he, he turned to Dr. Watson and said, you see, but you do not observe. And it's exactly the same with hearing and listening. The sounds can be coming into our head. It's not like there is no sound coming in. We're aware that there is sound out there. So we think, oh, I'm listening. But really, you're not paying attention to that. The sounds are coming in, your brain knows they're there, and you're not doing anything with them. So what we're really talking about here is the ability to be focused and in the present moment and really paying attention to all the sounds that are coming in so that you can respond accordingly. And why does this happen? Well, it's because our focus typically tends to be on the music that we're putting out. So it's all on what am I doing and how am I sending music out there, which kind of makes sense because that's, that's what people are going to hear from us. It's the sounds that we make. But because of that, focus that we put there, that extra importance we attach to that, we reduce the importance to really paying attention to what we're hearing, which actually, when you think about it, is just as vital to your music. And the problem here is that because it feels totally reasonable to be focusing on what we're putting out, we don't even realise a lot of the time that we are not paying full attention to the sounds that are coming in. And if you're finding this useful, then that's a lot of what I try and do in the videos on this channel. It's to challenge some of the assumptions that we take for granted as musicians. And when you do that, hopefully you'll find that you can open up new possibilities. You'll find things that you hadn't thought to work on that can make a huge difference in your music. So we've looked at why you might not actually be listening as carefully as you think you are, but why is it even that important in the first place? Well, there are a lot of different reasons. I'm going to cover just a few of them. But the first one I would think about is rhythm and, and the time feel with which you play your music. Because for me, this is one of the most important things. If you listen to great music and you, know, you, you hear stuff sometimes that sounds really impressive and it's not moving you for some reason. And that's often because the rhythm isn't there. And equally, sometimes you listen to music that doesn't sound like it's got anything that special, but you, you just can't take your attention away from it, or you can't stop your foot tapping to the beat or whatever it is. And again, usually that is because it's the rhythm that is just so spot on that it really impacts you. So rhythm and time feel hugely important, and you can't do that properly unless you are really listening to the other music that's going on around you. And again, even just in broader ways, that connection with the other musicians, whether it's emotions, whether it's where you're taking, taking the piece, whether it's you know, playing, playing together with some common purpose in mind rather than just a whole load of different people who are not out of time, who are not completely disconnected, but they're, they're doing their own thing and it's not got that group feel. So that again is something that you've got to be listening to have that and it makes such a difference to the music. And the final thing that I want to mention on this is when you're really listening, your perspective has to be on the overall sound that is getting out to the audience, because that's that's what you're listening to. Whereas when we're not listening, the focus tends to be very much more on what am I playing myself? And this is not so good for the music. It's a very selfish thing. Like I said, it, it affects that connection with the whole. You're just doing your bit. You can be disconnected. But it's also really good for our, you know, for reducing any nerves you feel, 
for in increasing the self-confidence. When you take the spotlight off yourself and you just put it on, what are we doing as a whole? What, what are we doing with all this music and putting it out there? What is the sound that the audience hears? That reduces nerves, you feel. It, it reduces self-consciousness. And again, that also helps you play better. And any of you who are in my Unlock Your Performance course, you'll, you'll recognize all this, uh, but it's it's always good to, to hear this stuff again and yeah, go and, go and check it out and remind yourself of this because like I said, it's so easy to forget. And one of the reasons I'm making this video, in fact, is to help remind myself because I, I do forget these things too, far more often than I would like to admit. And by the way, if you're finding this useful, then please click the like button so this video can spread to more people. Thanks. And I've been talking very much about listening to other musicians, the bigger sound so far, but I want to give an extra thought for people who improvise. And that is, it's just as important to really listen to yourself. And again, you think you're doing this, but often you're, you're not. And what I mean by that is really paying attention to what it is that you have just played as you're improvising, so that what you play next can be really connected to that and is totally influenced by what has come before. So this, this makes for a much, um, a much more connected and musical improvisation than just constantly playing unconnected phrases. And I had a really interesting experience of this recently. Um, I was in the, in the Lake District on an improvisation workshop studying with Mike Walker, amazing jazz guitarist and teacher and he got us as a group doing an exercise where going around improvising short phrases and each one had to follow on from the previous person who'd improvised something and that's a great exercise we did quite well at it but it's you know it's really challenging and you have to listen really hard and Mike mentioned afterwards well we've done this as a reacting to other people but one of the one of the reasons for practicing it is precisely because this is what you need to be doing when you improvise yourself you've got to be listening to what you just played just as much as if you're listening to another musician and taking it on from them and I found that a really interesting insight because it's not something that immediately comes to mind and again hadn't realized how much sometimes I'm not listening to what I've just played and I'm just worried about what's going to come next. So how do you put all this into practice? Well, I've got one simple suggestion for you with two stages. And the first is that before you play, whether this is practice or performance, you set an intention to really listen. So as simple as that, I am going to really focus on listening intently in this performance that I'm doing in this little bit that I'm practicing. And then equally, once you're done with it, review how did it go based on the criteria of, well, how well did I listen? Because you're gonna be really tempted to judge it in terms of, did I play all the right notes? Did I, you know, did I get the technique right? All these other things that we norm normally worry about. But I want you to think instead, what if I just judged it on how well did I listen? And that's really going to, to tell you how well you're following through on that intention. So this is something you need to repeat, obviously. It's not like you do it once and you're done, but it's a great exercise for just checking in how much am I already doing this and can I notice improvement if I work on it? So once you're listening really intently, what do you do next? Because it's, it's not only about taking that information in, you do need to respond in some way. So I would definitely recommend checking out my video on the best advice I ever got for playing with other musicians next. I've been Mark Molly Fletcher. See you next time.